Ludo, it's good to have you back, Paisa. Oh my God. Ludo, die. welcome back to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. Always a pleasure to see you guys. How you doing? You already got us cracking up laughing. That's what life is all about. We have to laugh. <laughs> That's right. Whether we win or lose on the uh, football field, on the cultural field, we have to laugh. Yeah, laugh is these, the best medicine. But these days, Napoli doesn't lose. They just win. Yeah. <laughs> I got to start with my... Uh, you know, every ones. Napoli post, I think that's what you comment. I do, because I don't like certain, not that I don't like, I don't agree with certain comments, and that's why I, you know, Naples were very superstitious, so. Like what? We, uh, like what comments? Uh, well, comments uh, that certain people make, jealousy, uh, you know, reading nah, between no, the, no, 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 I'm not talking about the, uh, the comments. Oh, the comments, the, uh, of course. Like, like when Mike was trying to make you guys get Ronaldo. Ronaldo. <laughs> no, I understand why Mike wanted Ronaldo I mean, in uh, in Italy, but for I don't Ger think I don't the, think Ronaldo. For no, no, for Ronaldo, <laughs> Ronaldo is not a, uh, a locker room guy. He's not no? one of those uh, players. It's me, myself, and I. I always thought that, and I to this day I still do. Uh, fair enough. He's not respected in the uh, in the locker room. He doesn't respect other players, and the coaches know that. And uh, I. I, I don't think you don't need a, a problem in a in your locker room. And then the, the Laurentiis would never buy a player a certain age. I mean, uh, mm. to me, it, it, it was all uh, fake news. Uh, Georgina, always welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so we, uh, we were doing special edition, second episode of a podcast in the same week, two episodes this week. Mm. We decided we're going to, the Champions League happened, Champions League, Europa League, Conference League. Uh, we'll talk about some of the games in Europe and then we'll preview, of course, because we've got Milan and Napoli this weekend. We've got some really, really, really good matches. It's especially Napoli, some. Milan. You're absolutely right. Thank you, Antonio. Mm. No, it's not. It's Milan Napoli. No, it's in uh, it's Milan. Milan Napoli. Oh, yeah. Shook. I'm yeah, sorry. We play in. Uh, <laughs> we play in Milan. Yes. I like it. Uh, I so like we, it better, we decided. Man. We decided that we're going to do a special podcast. Yeah. How you doing today, Anto? Good. Good. Yeah. Feeling good. Absolutely. Hey, you did good in Champions League this week. You got that win, uh, first win of the season. We we, did, we were together when we watched the game. I remember that. Yeah. And your stats they didn't they didn't uh, uh, demand actually that AC Milan. Uh, was going to win anything. My I stat said, was not stat against Milan. Well, but it was, uh, you know, all the negative was the stat was negative, so right? So the stat that I told them was that <clears> Milan <throat> hadn't won a home game in Champions League since 2013. And you said stats are meant to be broken. Sure enough, we did. Hey, by the way, I, I, I have to apologize to my attire, but uh, this one here, nevertheless, is still a black and red. It's a shark. Squally? It's a shark. Yeah, yeah, shark. But, uh, nice. you know, I had my cultural shirts uh, misplaced by my wife. Let me blame her. Huh? <laughs> Don't blame it on her. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> do you, you believe that we, I lost the bet. If Milan was going to win the league, I had to buy him a Milan jersey. Mm -hmm. Authentic jersey with Antonio, number five on the back. The guy never wears it. Yeah, do I'm going to wear it Sunday. He never brings, oh. never wears a shirt. You know? Oh, they deserve to win the uh, the league. It was, they were very consistent last season and they deserve to win the, uh, they deserve to win the league. Thank you, Ludo. At least the first one that actually he said it. Uh, I think know. that's my, uh, you know, that, that's my uh, uh, opinion. You know uh, what? You said it, Ludo, but I, 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 I always said that if Napoli will have won the campionato, it will make me happy. As long as Inter Juventus, they don't win it. Anybody, Roma, especially Napoli. Napoli is the South. Um, uh, I, uh, I, do, I do like Napoli to win. Let's start with, uh, with Napoli. Let's, let's talk about their Champions League uh, campaign so far. They had the match against Liverpool, which we, we've we've talked about so much, made us so proud. And then the game against Rangers, which, you know, I was a little bit scared. I said, you're going to Scotland, you're going against a team like Rangers. I know that they lost their first game, but I thought it could be mentally a little bit difficult for Napoli to win that match. And then they did it with, with flying colors, 3-0. Obviously, we know the penalty miss. What, what do you what do you make about Napoli in the Champions League this year? Because you actually have a chance of finishing first place yeah. in a group that most people, when they saw that, they automatically said, "All right, Napoli will be good if they finish second place." Well, I think when you when you start a campaign, uh, Champions League, and playing against Liverpool, and after two minutes, you're already creating, dictating the tempo. You're already creating a couple opportunities, and then you get a uh, uh, a penalty. It, it all goes in your favor. It's a different Napoli. It's a new Napoli. It's uh, uh, two years younger. I think the players that were part of the old group that started the rumors and the and whatever happened in the locker room with, with Ancelotti, they're, uh, they're all gone. And uh, De Laurentiis, great manager. He, he, he had a plan, which he succeeded really well. And I think we have a Napoli with new players that want to show 
that they can play. And I think that in the locker room this year, there's an air freshener. The, the, the air is fresher. You're breathing a little bit better. Without a leader. The, the, windows, are, uh, the, 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 the windows are open. And uh, I feel that also um, Spalletti does not owe certain things to certain people. And De Laurentiis was right that, you know, all the, the fans were against him during the summer, not buying any, any players. Any moves that he makes, it's dictated by a, a counter move. He, he knows already, this is what's going to happen. This is mm -hmm. what I'm going to do. He already has, it's like a lawyer that before he asks you the question, he already knows the answer to that, mm -hmm. to that, to that question. Otherwise, he will never ask you that question. Understand. So he knows he already has plan B. He knows which players he could get and which mm -hmm. players that he cannot get. So that is very, is very uh, uh, organized. And uh, we're doing really well today. I think Spalletti uh, is doing a great uh, job. And the new players, they are uh, easily into the, into the style of play. Like those guys have played together for years. Yeah. The, the Georgian guy, you know, Raspadori coming in and scoring important goals, even though they only play 10 minutes <clears throat> in Champions League. But those 10 minutes mentally and the confidence that built inside you goes a long way even with the with the georgian uh, uh player Quara, uh, politano, Quara, Quara. Uh, uh, politano but the, uh, the but why team. is there that why is there that air freshener because most people thought you're losing your leaders you're losing kulabali you're losing insignia you're losing fabian ruiz mertens got mertens guys that in the locker room were so important and even on the pitch at difficult times so why do you think that they're still able to have this fresh air i think because to be completely honest the people that you just mentioned that were leaders in the locker room, important games, important, certain games, important games, they were not leaders on the field. Mm. And I'm including Koulibaly. I'm including the Mertens. We failed. These people failed when they were supposed to carry Napoli on their shoulders. Important games, they have failed that opportunity to win something for <clears throat> Napoli. Uh, against Verona, tying 1-1. The Scudetto lost to, uh, to Juventus with 91, uh, uh, Point. with, with 91 uh, uh, points. The Scudetto lost this year where we were with Milan up to a certain point and then, Drifted you know, apart. then we, we went, uh, you know, we went down. So, yes, leaders, uh, we call them leaders, but leaders, <clears throat> they have to be consistent. They yeah. have to be on and off the field and the size of games, they have to show up. And I feel that these three players in certain games, they did not show up in important games when Napoli really needed them Interesting. in order to achieve a, uh, a particular so goal. So who's the leader now though? <clears throat> like, do you think that that's made everyone around, like the rest of the 11 players or 14 players, 15 players, do you think they've all thought that they had to step up because they lost those figures? Well, I think now- uh, The leadership look, 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 look the group, at, il gruppo. The group, look at Zielinski. Zielinski this year, he feels he's a leader. Mm. He has responsibility. He, uh, he answers to Spalletti and not the other players that were there last year, meaning mm -hmm. answers to Spalletti. He knows that he's one of the oldest on the team and he has to carry because now he's the leader of the, uh, the, the old people uh, that, uh, uh, that stay. Lozano, the same way. Politano, the same, uh, the, the same way. Now, these guys, they feel that in the locker room, they have something to say. Mm. They have something to prove. And now they're the leaders and they can speak to Spalletti and Spalletti speaks to them as leaders up to this time. We're always talking, you know, up to this time. Look at Ancelotti going back to two years. Why was Ancelotti fired? Because certain people did not accept the change that Ancelotti wanted to bring to the team, the style of play, changing from the 4-3-3 to the 4-4-2 and telling players now instead of playing in this position, you're going to play in this position. And they went to him and they said, but who are you? I'm not changing my position. This is the way I play. So they didn't start playing. They stopped playing for Napoli. So the shirt didn't matter. You were not a leader at that time because if you're a leader, you accept the coach's decision, what he wants to do and not try to get them fired and going on the field they're only producing 50 percent mm -hmm. so that those guys are gone those guys are completely gone mm. and i feel that it's a new spring it's fresh air their son in the locker room and i feel that the players they're playing they're happy when they play 
they're enjoying themselves on the I field. See that. Yeah. They support one I can another. See that. They're producing, and the old players helped a lot the new players into the system. Ludo, that's a good idea for the. Uh, I want to bring a point up to that. That's more how you brought it up. It was like new blood that's needed. Something new that was yes. needed in Napoli. But a I, new cycle. Yeah, exactly. So Napoli started a new cycle. Exactly. Reju the average age was 27 years. Yeah. Now the team is 25 years. At the the salary was 115. Yeah. Now we're done, I believe, to 80, 85. It went down tremendously. And I brought up in the last podcast um, for Napoli, um, per performance-wise, Insignia did, wasn't re didn't really score that much. Gvaratskeli already surpassed him in open goals this, in the regular goals this season, and it's only been a few match days. Do you think if you had someone like Gvaratskeli last season, or if Insignia actually put up numbers in scoring, how much closer do you guys think you could have went to the Scudetto? Since it's, you guys drifted off, you know, towards the end, like you were saying uh, Insigne, with Milan. Guys, no one brings you closer to Serie A than One Football. They are sponsoring this episode because they have digital video moments that are now available. We told you last time that they were not available yet. You had to be on a waiting list. Now they are. They are linked in our description below. This is going to be amazing, Marco. This is going to be present, future, and of course past incredible Serie A moments that you can now buy, sell, purchase, trade. Once you own it, it's yours. And there's so many amazing moments that we could possibly get. I know we're going to do a pack opening one of these days to do it. We're going to challenge each other and we're, see who gets a better exactly. one. I want Leal dribbling past all those Inter defenders. I was there live in person and to be able to own it. I think it would be amazing. I would never trade that one, though. I mean, the goal that uh, Dybala just scored against Empoli. Oh, my God. Outside the good. box. I, was was I wouldn't be mad Lows if I got that one, that's for sure. But you guys know, our name is Italian Football TV. We try to bring you all content and anything that is related to Serie A and One Football is doing that. If you've watched any Serie A this weekend, you even see their ads all over the place on the, on the billboards. Guys, the description is in the link is in the description down below. Go and get your digital video moments. Thanks to One Football. Now, let's return to the show. Senior, to me, felt the responsibility of being Neapolitan. Mm -hmm. You are Neapolitan, you are the captain of the team. It's like the whole world is on your shoulder. You need to prove three times more than mm -hmm. another captain mm -hmm. from another city, or, or being the captain of that team, you have to prove yourself. And I felt that character-wise, personality-wise, Insignia did not have that capability and say, okay, today, I'll carry you on my shoulders. Mm. Today, we're walking out of here with a, with, with with a victory. Win, yeah. It would feel too much pressure. And he couldn't take it, right? He yeah. couldn't, right. You but know, on that, but on that pressure, my question is, I know things are working really well now. We're talking about, in the moment, what we've seen at the table, what, what they've shown in the first couple of games. My, my thing is, what, do you think when the going gets tough, when they f hit that first hurdle, are you confident that with Spalletti and with these newfound leaders in the team that you'll be able to overcome those things? Well, you will, uh, Marco. Throughout the season, every team, uh, no matter how strong you are and the names that go on the field and, and how much they're getting paid, the famous play, you will have hurdles during the season. But that's how Spalletti's job is to keep that locker room together, but do you make think he everyone can? feel important, yes. I think I, I I think he can because based on what he's promised and based on the way right now he's uh, he's playing and what he told those players because remember you got a guy like Raspadori okay I want to go to Napoli but before these guys accept to go to another team they will have a conversation with the coach coach I'm coming to you what do you expect from me how are you going to utilize me am I starting from the bench am I a starter how many games am I going to play? What are you guaranteeing me? So Spalletti spoke to these guys, even Simeone. Simeone was convinced by his father. He had opportunities, uh, proposals from the EPL, important teams. But his father said, you're going to Napoli. And he, ex he only wanted to go to Napoli. So now he accepted. That's a guy that scored, what, 15, 17 goals? 17, yeah, 17 last year. Last now season. he's going to be the backup of Osimo. Of so he accepted that project mm. because Spalletti told him, Raspadori, you will start a few games, a few games you will come. And Krava came, you're going to be the substitution of Insigne. You're going to start on my on the left side, Zerbin is your sub, and then Lozano and, and uh, Politano, Politano are going to alternate guys, because you got to play three guys, times a week. The only thing that you guys are missing, the philosophy, number one, has changed. Ludo is just saying it. The, flesh, yes. the air so what are we and missing? Stuff. But what you're missing is a point. The team is younger, the way Ludo said it, and the speed has changed. 
Napoli is not a slow team coming up. Napoli is trying to emulate AC Milan in a way. <laughs> <laughs> it's a compliment. Napoli has the quality. Speed. Napoli has quality. The speed. The feet. The feet. Listen quality. to me. The speed of the game in Italy. We always look at the English Premier League. Oh, look how fast! Look how fast! Look what happened against the Liverpool. Mm-hmm. Napoli took the game to them. The they didn't have the weight to, for Liverpool yeah. to, to do something. Napoli beat them on their game. On the speed, you just you just overrun those guys. Mm-hmm. You have to just make them come with their tongues out and let them just well, run that out I also bread. blame Klopp a little bit. Well, listen, that I one point is this. He didn't but look at the people that you guys got on the team. Kvara is a fast guy. All the defenders that you have right now, except for uh, the, some of the old squad over there, Di Lorenzo, they got speed on their legs. Zielinski is playing with a different spirit. It's not a leader, but it's someone that doesn't have to say good morning or uh, thank you, sir. No, but he's finally playing company. in the position that is natural position. And Spalletti is putting him in the national. He moved back a little bit. Correct. He moved back yes. like 10 meters. If you see Zielinski, yes. he used to play a little bit too high where now he's got the he's, freedom. He's more deep But I think now. it's also, it's like for me, what I look at Napoli and the thing that's most impressive is it's the collective. It's the collective group that makes everything better. Look at Angisa. Look at the player that he's become in the system with Lobotka, Angisa, and Zielinski, which for me is the best midfield in Italy. When I watch right. the balance between all three okay. of them, Loporka, very technical, sees the game a few steps ahead of everyone. Angisa breaks a line, brings a little bit more physicality to the game, can win 50-50 balls. And Zielinski is the most attacking-minded. He likes to Stri- take a shot the and score goals. Yeah. Dribble, but Ludo, the Ludo, look but at the average speed of the my ball. Thing is when you put them all together is when they work. I think if you separated them, I don't know how good yeah. they would be on their own. As a team, but together, great. Napoli found the rhythm that that's how they work. That was that Fabian also, too, losing what, someone what like Fabian. I give, what I give huge credit to Spalletti is the rebirth of Lobotka. That guy is a maestro. They Lobotka is the best. He I mean, under Gassuso, he was 30 pounds he overweight. He dictated the tempo and everything. Yeah, that's, right. I agree. I agree. He, he was 30 pounds overweight. But now the guy, I mean, I think he should be on Dancing with the Star. You see him all of a sudden going, his body is completely to the left. And then he makes that quick. And the, well, you see him going, to, you know, with the ball to the right. His body yeah, is completely yeah. on He's one a different side. player. And then so completely different completely player. Different. That's thanks to what's his name. The thanks Spalletti. to Spalletti. People got, people got pissed at us because we put Lobotka in our, in our team of the, not team of the year, but we did like a best 11 right now. They said like Brozovic is better. The uh, Benacer is better. For me, Lobotka is the best midfielder in Serie A right now. Since the start of the season, mm-hmm. Benacer has been great. Brozovic is not. I love Brozovic. I know he scored two goals. He matches. You can time, argue on Giza physically, too. Physically, he's yeah. not there. But if you had to choose one, for me, I would build a midfield around Lobotka before I built it around anyone else. Right. Based on the first seven you, you games of the guys. season, that guy's doing so much. Yeah, Ludo. Doing so much Ludo, Ludo, the physicality too. that we see right now in Serie A. It's trying. We try to match the, the, not the English Premier League because we have nothing to be copied from. But we have tech, we have technicality and physicality at the same time. But now, what the Serie A is focusing, even the young team like Salernitana, the speed of Salernitana when they were playing Juventus was overwhelming. Juventus couldn't catch up with the with the play that Salernitana Napoli, was showing Napoli on the field. Napoli now has the bench that last year did not have. Now there we have you go. Yeah, there much you have people that can when you play against the German teams, against the English teams. You put a guy like, you know, Dom, uh, was it Dombele? And Dombele. And Dombele, Dombele, right. and Dombele. Once he gets into yeah. shape, he still doesn't have the rhythm. He still doesn't have the move because he hasn't played in a yeah, long no time. Wow. But once he gets into shape, you put him and Anguissa, you have the Berlin Wall over there. I mean, Little in the midfield. Man. When that guy gets into yeah. shape, the way Anguissa is now, that's the Berlin Wall. I mean, now you got shoulders, you know, you got physicality. They went you got, yeah. balls. Marco, if you, you know, look at the first place, if you look at the first place uh, uh, teams right now, Napoli and Milan, look at the and average Atalanta. speed and yeah. Atalanta. But look at the speed that is on the field. We running the ball. We are running. And you guys are mad. <laughs> we are, are also running. Mentally, mentally the also intensity. Napoli last year, a game against Spezia, would have never won. Absolutely. Napoli won out of one last year, the game against Spezia, 89, uh, 89th minute. Mm-hmm. The game against the Rangers yesterday, the Napoli of last year no. or two years ago, after missing two penalties, the team would have started shaking, shaking mentally, would've, and mm-hmm. you probably would have lost that game. Probably. But now nah, that's the team. Okay, we missed two penalties. Not a problem. Yeah. Let's continue working. We'll get it done. Boom, they got it done. That's what now, I was what surprised you, what, do you think, what do you think yeah. you guys could do in, in Champions League? Forget about um, how far you're going to go, but do you think that now, right now, in within the locker room, and even from your side, you want to finish first place. You still believe. I know it's only two games in. You're first place right now. How do you feel Mark, in I that think, sense? I think this year is a completely different year than the past. Number one, you got you have the World Cup break. Now you will finish the, the, the group uh, uh, stage. stage 
by the end of October. And if Napoli finishes first, and now you come back in February and those teams coming back from the World Cup and those players, and maybe the English teams and the German team, they're tired or they're not in shape. Napoli, I think, mm. can, can, can hurt someone or can really make it, my opinion, Make, you know, a to count. The top eight. Make a count, yeah. Make it to the top eight. To, to switch over to, to Milan, because I do see a lot of similarities, actually, between you two. We play um, the same style of soccer, 4 2 3 one And, it's, and it, I love... No, Napoli is 4-3-3. Uh, from time to time, you Napoli do it 4-3-3. For, forget about formation. He did try a couple of times, 4 2 three, one It didn't in work against of, Lecce, it didn't work. In mm -hmm. terms of intensity and in terms of uh, just mentally, the style that they're trying to play, the European style of play, Milan's another team who... In the group, you know, there were some doubts, right? After the first game uh, where you tied 1-1, you came out against Dinamo, and we see Chelsea even struggled against both of those teams. Chelsea, who is regarded, I know they're going through a bad moment, but Chelsea's a, a massive club from, from England. They lost to Dinamo, who you guys were able to beat, and then they tied as well. Um, so for you, how do you, how do you see your, your Champions League run? Obviously, it just started, but do you think Champions League is a goal for Milan? to get into the next round and to go even further on. As I said on the previous uh, um, last meeting that we had, I think that if AC Milan, they play and they stay healthy, AC Milan is gonna try to go at least over the quarterfinal. We're gonna try to go to the semis. I'm telling you, listen, this squad here has been built. We have you, we have talent, okay? I mean, even the older, the, the, the only two old guys that we have, Ibra and, and Giroud. Giroud, Giroud is playing, is playing high dividend. You know how many people that look up to Giroud? Giroud is deadly. Giroud might not play, might not play well for 55, 60 minutes. The guy smells the goals. Yeah. The 55, smells 60 the net. minutes. You give him the ball to Giroud on the right place at the right you time. Put it in. Giroud is gonna screw you. So, what, like, do, what do you think is different though? Like, obviously, I think Pioli's done really good at, at rotating the, the squad. Because look, look at Salah Makers. He's got two goals in two games in Champions League. I am League, telling and he you the difference, really well. the difference is that we have more people coming off the bench that they can do damage. Pobega is one of them. Mm. We have uh, uh, De Catelare. Then we have uh, uh, the young kid over there. Uh, what's his name? Shank, whatever is his name. We have options on every position. We were short on defense the other, uh, uh, last year. Now we got a lot. We got Kajabak. Also a very young team. We have a young team and we have a lot of talent. We have a lot. They are one year older. We won last year with those play with the very same player. We didn't give up on anybody. Except Plus they for, have uh, a solid ownership. That's we very important. We have well, but, uh, solid ownership that's in translate spending a lot of money. Money. We know that the ownership, if needed be, they're gonna come through with one or two more, uh, you know, players. If uh, if we need it down on the down the stretch, but AC Milan, he's there to do damage. We are not afraid of the big name. Like, look at Napoli, what they're doing to Liverpool. Listen, it's open. It's open. We're not afraid of the English Premier League and we're not afraid of the German. AC Milan is not And next afraid. year we're gonna get Koulibaly on alone back to Napoli. <laughs> We the are one. not. <laughs> listen, so he's, gonna, he's gonna sit on the bench Marco, when Kim needs a break. But listen, <laughs> flipping the coin, I'm gonna show you what's going on with you guys with the Juventus. I know. One, but one second, one second. Right. Let, let, let's translate, Mike. I have a question for you because we just talked about the two teams that are doing the best in Champions League. Inter, let's be fair, they won against Victoria Pilsen, yeah. uh, but obviously they they haven't they haven't done as well as the other two. Juventus, we know we're gonna talk about them as well. Do you think Milan and Napoli are in a different category of their own? in terms of their style and how far they could go in Europe? Are they the two Italian teams that can go the furthest? Honestly, yes, and I underestimated both before the season started. I didn't think Milan would be doing this well. I put them in third, and I, and I didn't even put Napoli in top four, but right now, they're the two most confident teams. They're the two most fun Serie A teams to watch, mm. and they look more of a unit than any other team, Inter, Juventus, Atalanta, Lazio, Roma, whatever the case is. But why do you think you didn't predict so them much. there, and why do you think they are now? What's, what's the difference? What's changed for you? What changed for me is I thought... Besides the results. I thought Milan... Uh, I didn't think Milan would replicate that great season, but it seems like there was no break for them. they just picking up steam where it started. And Napoli, the thing that I was worried about, where I think everyone was, was losing uh, players, leaders, like you mentioned before. And will Guevara pan out? Will Kim pan out to replace the shoes of Vincini and Koulibaly? And I, I, I was skeptical of that. I'm not going to lie. And then... Players like uh, Roma were getting so many good players, so I put them ahead of them. But it seems like it panned out for Napoli. They're doing good. And for Milan, they're they're picking up where they left off from last season. And right now, they're the most informed. They're the playing the best football in Europe, in Serie A. And yeah, I think I, I got to base it off that. Just great, 
Great performance all around. Great locker room. Great team and great players. I think the stabi- I think the difference between Napoli, Milan, and the rest currently, my opinion, is the stability of the um, of the clubs, mm. of the ownership. Mm. I think the players feel that. I think the players feel when the management is there, when the management is doing things, they they feel it. They 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 do sense it, and it does go on the field. You have Marotta right now that doesn't know what to do. The ownership saying they have no money. They need to sell. Uh, not the same Lukaku as two years ago. Juventus has their own issue. I feel that Napoli and, and Milan, I believe they do have a strategy. Look at, for example, uh, De Laurentiis. Even though De Laurentiis, I give him a lot of credit, but to this date, he has failed. Even though there are over 7 million Neapolitan fans around the wor- world, to bring Napoli at a global marketing level, I don't think we're there because it's a one-man show. But he's very smart. He's, he's, he's a business guy. Before players are leaving, you're already, Oliveira came already in May, Krava in January, already replacing these guys. Some guys are gone. Okay, I already have the replacements. Anguissa, uh, Sunday, the championship finished. On Monday morning, uh, Fulham, here's the money. Anguissa's mine, 50 million. He did spend the money. He does spend the but he's not going to throw out the money. Yeah. He spends it smart. strategically. Yeah. Very smart. smart. But again, it's a one-man show. Napoli, if Napoli wants to go somewhere, wants to become a, a team, you need to become a, 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 brand. a, a, a global a brand. marketing brand. A brand. But maybe that's, that's why you, Ronaldo would have helped. <laughs> no, Ronaldo cannot yeah. Yeah, come into Napoli. It would not and say it's too, I it's too big yeah, I get for I understand. A, a, a club like uh, a, a club. Because De Laurentiis... For him, Napoli is a toy. He wants to have fun. Because if he sells Napoli, he's going to go home and fight with his wife. He has no intentions. <laughs> he's got body. He has, he has no intentions to go into politics. He doesn't want to be Berlusconi number two to you know be a senator or nothing. He wants to have fun with his toy. Be out of the house, not to fight with his wife. That's sell, all. buy, go watch the games, talk to the league, go to the meetings with the league, have dinner with the uh, Comiso, have dinner with the, uh, with the Milan... Uh, that's it. Yes, so, it's Ludo, a story. But at the Ludo, same time, you're, right, I know you're talking about building a brand. You're building all this stuff. But it's kind of funny because that's the pushback that now Juventus fans are giving on their club. They're mm-hmm. saying they went too much to that side where they kind of forgot about the sporting side. Too corporate, right? That, that's the feeling. Yeah. that's. I mean, look at what's happened. Look at the stadium. Look at how empty the stadium was yeah. against mm-hmm. Benfica Crazy. where they've tried to like modernize. There's so many problems with the stadium. And I, I have friends who are season ticket holders for years, for decades. And they say they can't believe how bad things are at the stadium right now, which has come from the top trying to make things more corporate. Correct. Right. I think the, my opinion, the issue at Juventus is we know who has the money and uh, who has the deep pockets and uh, who has uh, put the money for the club. It's Elkan. In the past couple of years, he put more or less a about lot. 500 million, a lot of money, Elkan. But I just believe that Elkan, between Elkan and Agnelli and Nedved and Arriva Bene, I don't think there is. Oh, 100%. I think there's, not. there's different 100%. voices, different opinions. And Elkan, I don't think, even though he has the money, even though he's the real owner of Juventus, I don't think he has the capability, nor the personality, nor the style, nor the knowledge to say this is what needs to be done. And Juve keeps making mistakes. Well, that's why he has Agnelli. But Agnelli but, has but has failed. In, Agnelli I, has failed. Yeah, in, in my opinion, years. the last few years, like okay, I know we're gonna we're gonna we'll dive into like Allegri, we'll dive into the the details of it. But it, for me, it starts from the top. It starts from the amount of poor decisions that were made. Correct. That led to the team that you see that plays against Benfica. Correct. That loses to Benfica at home. That ties to Salernitana. That nearly lost to Correct. them. It starts from there. So I totally agree. Right. The problem is you're not gonna see Agnelli leave. Well, that's yeah. Elkan. You, you're not going to see Let that. Let me tell you one thing. Yeah, that I just see picked that. up on I this mean, conversation. Even that, Ludo. In four or five years, you have failed in the past four or five years. Yes, you, oh, we won the Scudetto for nine years. Yes, who was your only competitor in those mm-hmm. nine years? Mm-hmm. The Milano teams were not existing in those nine years. Besides the first, it was the first only year. Napoli. First year, the Milan was really good. And you won all those nine Scudetto in a row because it was only... Na- if Laurentiis would have been a little bit 
smarter with with a with a better plan and buying it's some players taking, yeah. in January. In January the yeah, transfer yeah. window, maybe today we would you know, out of those nine, we would have had one or two scores. Marco, 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 Marco brought up Let, that a guy like Del Piero is missing from the team. Listen to this. In listen. the organization. A guy that, that has like the charisma and the personality, like kinda like what Maldini brought to Milan, you're missing that kind of person. Because let's be honest, Nedved, if you ask I know he's the vice president, but if you ask any person what Nedved does, they don't know what Nedved actually does. He only, only complains. He, he reports. He reports to Agnelli. So you don't really have that guy like Maldini, but who have, understands the club in and out, right. and who could provide both the business side, but also the cultural side of things. Yeah, but look at look at look at Maldini when he had Boban. It was not working mm. out. Boban, they let him go. Now he's working really Masada. well with Masada. Yeah. Paisa, I got the answer for this. Oh, God. God. <laughs> I'll tell you. I've been trying to tell you guys that you guys are going back and forth, back and forth. Here's the, here's the, the juice, okay? <laughs> the suco. Agnelli with Elkan and company, Nedved and uh, Arriva Bene. Who's this Arriva Bene? Arriva he Bene from Formula One. Arriva, Arriva yeah. Bene was on the Scuderia Ferrari. Yeah. He did not do very well in the Scuderia Ferrari. That team right now, the Juventus, is like a family affair. Anybody that is on the family, regardless whether you know, you have the knowledge of the game or the soccer or the structure that you need to build in order to put the, the numbers on the board, you just been brought in just because you you part of the family or the uh, whether it's Ferrari whether the it's the, the system so at some point the family the, tree yeah at next some, year is going to be a hundred years that Agnelli family owned right. Juventus it's going to be the hundred year anniversary okay. next year at 2000 some point, maybe, maybe, maybe 100, 100, no, 23. 100 at a time at some point the, the old up. man what they used to call the old man he the real Agnelli that was smart who did he surround himself to Johnny, Boni Perti right? yeah Boni Perti the guy that now you shipped to Inter, he had Marotta. leaders. Betteg at some point was inside the, the leadership. Now Del Piero is needed, but Del Piero is going to draw all the, the attention upon himself. And then Agnelli is going to say, hey, who the hell am I, a sucker? I'm the most important guy. That's why the camera, 70% of the time, they go on him. None of the freaking team. Yeah, but so, it's been already five years listen and it to me. Worked. They got to change. Bring Del Piero, if you don't want to bring Del Piero, bring somebody else, but you need a technical mind and a leader, or a past leader of the team that is going to have to just go okay. over there so and be the PR for the team. I think we agree. Let's talk about, because that's big picture. Let's talk about now, right now, where Juventus is, because they're not going to change. They're not going to get Del Piero now. That's something that would happen in the summer. Now, right now, Juventus is at a delicate point in the season mm -hmm. where they need to make a decision on what happens. The game against Salernitana, the VAR, we already spoke about it. We spoke about what happened then. Forget about it. it. For 60 minutes, you got dominated by Salernitana, and they were up 2-0 at your own home. You lost to Benfica, where your coach, Allegri, said, this is the most important game of our Champions League. Judge me on this. And he lost 2-1 to Benfica. Could have been more. And the, I, scariest, the scariest thing is, at 2-1, they had zero reaction. Mm. Benfica there was person. zero reaction for Juventus when they went down 2-1 at home. And he substituted Milik. Milik. I mean, I don't get it. That's the guy. He was playing really well. He scored, yeah. the, he goal. scored the goal. He's too. got a great header. He's tall, but he could put the ball in the net. Why you sub? I don't and Di Maria, Di Maria didn't even understand it. He asked, "Why did you get subbed out? Why did he sub you out?" So my question is now: You're at this point. We know he makes nine million a year. This is the big thing that everyone says. He's got two years after this year, so he has like a forty million euro package total. What you would have waste. to you would have to pay him out in, unless he gets another job, right? What a waste. If you are Juventus. And you're looking at this season and you're looking that you got zero points in the Champions League group, not looking good. You got Maccabi that you're going to have to play next two games in a row. You're looking at this season at the Serie A. Do you think that they have to make an evaluation on are we going to lose more money by not going further in the Champions League and potentially not finishing top four than we are keeping Allegri? Just keeping him because of the salary, and should they go out and get another coach? Should they get Tuchel or Zidane or De Zerbi or one of these options? What you might have, Marco, you have the heat to those nine million nine million euro that you have uh, with a leg. I don't think they can afford it. Yeah, I, why I not? Who told you that? Why not? How come? Who the don't you don't Ma you think it's a bigger Ludo. risk that they're not gonna go further in the competition? Well, Marco, even regardless Juventus, which players they purchased last year, this guy seven, eight million and all that. What I hear at the beginning of the season, and that's what gets me upset. Not because I'm, I'm a Napoli fan and, and I do not like uh, uh, Juventus. No, I'm talking about international. 
or our goal this year is to win the Scudetto. That's not a Juventus talk. To me, it's not a a powerhouse like Juventus, a, a, a club like Juventus, the biggest club in Italy. You don't say, the, oh, the thing is, so what tells me this administration, okay, we're going to be out of the Champions League. As long as we make top four, we will be happy. We'll get our 30, 40 million. Then next year, we will think about it. But you have to go out of Champions League. I mean, Nothing. going out yeah. of Champions League is the bare, in my mind. Or oh, you got to eat this money. The bare minimum. But, so what would you what would you do if you're in charge? Do you think, well, do you think Allegri, do you think sacking Allegri and bringing in one of the options helps save the season for events or do you think they need to grind it out with Allegri that he's just missing these players that are injured blah 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 and that things will get better I don't think I, I don't think it's a matter of players missing yes we do want to find uh, the uh, let's say the culprits we want to okay KSA still hurt what okay, excuses yeah. no, I don't think it's excuses I listened to an interview last week last Sunday on the zone actually I listened to it twice <laughs> <laughs> Because mm. I want to, you know, sometimes you look at I the people in the eyes. Yeah. You get a different perspective. You, know, you, you look at yeah. the people in the eyes. You look at, you know, what they want to say, interview. but they don't say. Bonucci. Have, you, have you seen that? With that? Amazon Prime? That's all after Salernitana. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. After, I didn't watch it twice, said, no. We, are, we don't work. We're not motivated. Yeah. Mentally, we are completely uh, empty. We don't know what we're doing. We don't know what, we just need to work and we'll get out of here. I mean, we'll get out of this situation. So now, based on what he's telling me, this team is not motivated. He cannot motivate this team. And based on what you said before, Benfica from three weeks, Allegri, oh, judge me at Benfica. The most important game of the season, you're tying 1-1 at the end of the first half. You're, you have 15 minutes in the locker room. You come out the second half completely mentally empty that you're not able to 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 win this game so that tells me that the coach cannot motivate these players they don't know what to do and he's basically he, he thinks just because he's allegri they everybody will do what Ludo, what is, but, but the, what he's doing is actually wrong it's even worse if you ask if you say before the game judge me on this game you're putting a lot more pressure on your players if you do that no 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 it, it wasn't a so that means that. we could lose the other game. No, no, but, no, but to, don't start that, just that, that winning that, that winning mentality when you put on that shirt, you play to win listen, every single game. And listen, the players now they seem like that they mentally they're L'antipasto they trained out. L'antipasto is supposed to be making you more angry for the first course, second course, and then dessert, frutta, cafe e gelato. Allegri is not serving you an antipasto, it's serving you already un mattone. That is going to just stay in right stay in your here stomach. and he's not going to leave you. So don't start, don't judge me. You can judge me on this game. That says the wrong Every game. If you're you telling me, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a Serie A player, but if you're telling me this is the game of your life, do you think I'm going to be relaxed on the field? I am not. So he basically, he told all of those people that he placed around the field, hey, this is game is on you if you fuck it up. It's on you. In other words, this is the game that we have the win, that you have the win, not me. So when he says judge me, and indirectly is telling them, hey, that's on you. So I mean, this is the wrong message to send. This guy here, is, I don't think he knows. He knows basic psychology <laughs> you guys you <laughs> listen to me I, i'm not joking i know you're not I, I feel like if i was a juventus fan i would be so pissed to have somebody saying to me judge but me on this but that's game. also the administration that hired this guy for the second they didn't time tell me, they worked, didn't tell he, me he, to he say worked, judge me he, on this game his cycle finished uh when when they lost those finals with the with the champions league when Real they had the uh, like, like yeah, now you you, you come back him. again it's like correct yeah your best friends with it he was he was mad that that the management convinced him to sack him the first time because he didn't want to sack. I nearly didn't want to sack Allegri. It was, was forced. Yeah, he was he was forced to sack him because Nedved and everyone said they made a decision. You, they said no, he's got to be a sack. But also Ronaldo, Ronaldo had a lot to do with it. Either way, whatever. Ronaldo also just, had a lot to my, do with it. Because my, that my, point not, that, my point that is that my point is that I nearly didn't want to sack Allegri. The first time he was sacked, he didn't want to sack him. 
Now he brought him back, and guess what? Guess what's on? It's on him this time. But that's where I feel like Juventus kind of... Him, him sacking him again is admitting that he that, warmed up this, he reheated the soup, and guess what? It's still bad. That's where I feel like Juve messed up, though. I feel like they brought him in, and they had that false hope where they can redo what they did with the five Scudetti or whatever when he was in charge. And the real question is, right now, it's not working. One, because this, the, this Serie A season is not the same as when... Juventus okay, we, we know, but, but what stuff. should they do? Juventus, what right should they, now, do? they gotta cut their losses because they're gonna lose even more money if they keep him. Sack him. By now, if they keep playing like this, Sack him, I don't Mike. care. They're not gonna be making top four. By the looks of it, they're not even gonna leave their group. And overall, they're gonna lose more money from the Champions so League. Sack from Champions you would League, sack I would him now? absolutely sack him to cut my losses and try to get a manager and as who? soon as like who? Someone like, like who? Tuchel. You so think Tuchel? I, I would 100% get someone like Tuchel. Pocket, pocket, that, pocket, listen, because you know. someone like him can come in, they can uh, control the egos like he did with uh, Chelsea. He just came in, he managed the team very well, and he has better ideas, better attacking football than Allegri. He doesn't play that defensive right. style football. I, feel that now. I, feel like like that Ma, that I agree with Mike 100%. I'll tell you the reasons why. We're not just judging uh, 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 Allegri como una persona, just as, a, as the, the, the leader of the, uh, of the squad. His style of play is not good. Juventus. Yeah. It's, it's not, not a team that he has not. to wait and then he try to do something after the fact. Juventus has to yeah. take the game to the other play. You're to passionate the other team. about this, huh? Ah, yeah, it's, 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 go. Like, it's like 11 and players that get go. together. He's like 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 a defensive east, a catenacciaro. It's like 11 players that get together at the park and they have like a pickup game. That's the way they see it. He should be opening an outdoor store. That's what he should do. Why? Because catenaccio in Italian means a locker. Just to open a locker, uh, so a locker room. I don't. I don't believe that they're gonna that they'll sack him and get. Uh, I don't believe yeah, me neither. But I'm saying I that's what they should do. I looked up. I looked this up because uh, I was thinking, when's the last time they've ever had a, an Italian, a non-Italian coach? You know what it is? Two, uh, the Shams in 2006, oh, yeah. and guess when the time before that was? 1971. They so, always get Italian so coaches. So the to Juve. They always get Italian coaches. The only thing for me is I think I think Tuchel they're not gonna get. I think Tuchel is gonna be similar to Allegri. I think maybe just like I, I also do believe I'm starting to worry that the players are not behind Allegri anymore, and I'm seeing <laughs> yes. that. I mean, and, the fact and that's that, what Bonucci yeah. said, and they're that's why fighting. I watched it twice. And that's a fa the fact that Di Maria, the fact that Di Maria looks over at Milik and says, "Why did this guy sub you?" That's a bad sign. Very bad. The only other guy is, is Zidane, but I know he's been trying to wait for France. Yeah, that's I think Zidane, you know, he knows Juventus, he knows the system. I think the players will really respect Zidane a lot more. That they'll listen to him mm. and he can get them in order. The only thing is Zidane was kind of the coach he did so good with Real Madrid because he had the players to go there. Now, I, I, I agree with what you said though. I'm not saying that Juventus is the best team on paper. I'm not saying that. But I do think it's a massive excuse to say that we shouldn't sack Allegri because he's missing these Pogba, no, Chiesa, Chiesa, Di Maria. Yeah. Because for me, I don't care if you're missing those guys. The fact that you get dominated by Salernitana, who Salernitana until the final match day last year was had one foot in Serie B. I mean, that just shows you that he has no plan B. I think Allegri did very well with great players, world-class players. I think he had that man management skills, but he has no other option when he doesn't have the best team in the league. I don't think he finds a solution, and I think right now Juventus need a guy who finds solutions when you don't just have everything at your plate. Marco, he, let me just say he, one more he thing. He lost Ludo. control of the players; they're not Ludo. following him. It's an important, they, it's following. an important stat since you guys like stats. <laughs> okay, Napoli. Who was the superstar in Napoli? You don't no. see superstars. Kvara, Kvara Kelly. Respect. Uh, Put some respect on that 11 name. Eleven million dollars. Eleven million Ten, euro. Yeah. Who's the superstar in AC Milan besides Leao that we found him out last Leao's year? A no, Leao is definitely Leao's a superstar. A superstar. Come on, Stop. he carries Milan on the No, I said besides that, Stop. we not the team on top right now. We do not have superstars. Juventus does not have superstars. So with this, what's your excuse? But, no, it's the system that is not working. Right. There was never a cycle created. Juventus yeah. every year always try to put band-aids. Mm -hmm. You had Bonucci, Kelly, the BBC. You had Buffon. Those were the those were the leaders of the team. Now you have very good player, but not superstars. So it's so that say Milan, so it's Napoli, so it's Inter. You do, there is no <laughs> team every year. It's there always is, a band-aid. Every year. Well, it's always, oh, let's get so this you, guy, he's true. free. Right, uh, right. You know, the Quick Maria, Maria, Maria 35 years the old, this is a band-aid. Pogba, he's coming, he was coming off injuries all the time when he was on menu. He was not utilized. 
that much on Manchester United. It's another bang day. And the fact that they're being used now as the excuses for why they can't win. Chiesa, shows Chiesa, you where the what do you want from Chiesa? What about you? you spent 70 million dollars for, uh, for what's his name over there? Uh, uh, yeah, so Quadrado, you, Quadrado was a, was a mistake resigning Quadrado. Why? Why? Quadrado has like been overused. Mess. Quadrado is the, one of the he's few a, quality nah, players that they have. Quadrado, he's a shadow of himself. Quadrado now. has he lost two, two steps. Yeah, he has. Quadrado yeah, has lost two steps. He gets beat in defense. He can't beat a guy off the bench. He gave you those 10, 15 minutes. I agree with that. At the end of the game, but not to start. This is to finish to say that the superstar they're not going to put you over the top. The fact that Di Maria won with Argentina or that Pogba won with France or whatever doesn't mean crap we have Giroud 35 years old we plugged him right there we didn't have anybody because everything around you works well, that's what I'm saying it's the I system know, I know. el sistema hey, el grupo when, when you Juventus, guys don't have it when Juventus started their, their winning cycle they Conte had guys like Esti Garibia they had guys go. like Giaccherini guys that when they left they, they did nothing anywhere but because all the guys that's why I keep saying about yeah, Napoli and the collective you also had Bonucci 10 years younger okay. 12 years younger Kelly, Kelly, 10 years younger, years younger. Years younger. okay but either way <laughs> Bonucci Bonucci was, was seen as a, as a joke when he first joined Juventus he was so bad when Bonucci first joined Juventus he was so bad but guess what it's everything around him it was balancing him out with Chiellini balancing him out with the right players around him that made him better my point is that you you put a player like um, maybe let's say let's say Loborca or Anguisa. You plug one of them in Juventus because everything else is not working. He won't look as good. But because you plug him in at Napoli, where they figured out that eleven Correct. players all work together, is why he looks so good. Correct. So that's why they're you, synchronized. You can't just keep you, you throwing. Have to be synchronized. It's not one player that's going to fix Juventus. It's no. for a but while the whole the, the building. Thing is, the, the foundation is cracked. So you right. keep putting these little little pieces, but guess what? At the bottom, you're cracked. The stitches Michael, but they it's come also, off from time to time. Like, it's the, the fighting spirit is not there. I just feel that Juventus, the way uh, th that kind of club, uh, famous club, big club, I don't care who's the coach. When you put on that jersey, you mm. gotta fight. Yeah. Mm. And you you don't have to fight. You Ludo, gotta give 110%. Well said. That's a, that's a and culture I feel thing. That it, it's a culture Ludo, thing. Right. Well said. And I don't feel that's not... Right now, they're not fighting. They're not motivated. There's no spirit. There's no team spirit. It's like everyone is on is, is on their own. When yeah, even though you exactly. know that jersey, so we all agree. You, we all agree they should important. sack. We all agree that they should sack Allegri. Yes, yeah, I, I think they, they should. should. Not when that they, they will. Get, not that they not, will. They will yeah. But yeah. would you, yeah. if you were in charge, you would sack him today? You know what? Sack Allegri. But uh, like you, Ludo, just brought what I was about to say before. La divisa della Juventus, the shirt, yeah. it's a piece of concrete, it's so heavy. Yeah. If you do not, if you're not capable to withstand the, the weight of that jersey, you're gonna crumble, okay? When you're wearing a Juventus jersey, when it's a Milan jersey, that jersey has got a lot of history and mm -hmm. responsibility. Absolutely. I agree. If you're not capable to withstand that weight, you're gonna crumble under the pressure. There are players inside of the Juventus right now that they are, could be great players in mm -hmm. every other team. I agree but with you that. played in Torino where the pressure to win is right there. A lot of those guys are not going to be able to withstand that pressure. Yeah, but also, so, Ando, when you have the administration in August saying, oh, I'm, uh, th this year our main uh, focus is to win this today. Bad, bad news, bad that's, news. That's bad communication. I mean, a team like Juventus, you have to fight at least, at least you have to, you, you, you should fight for the semifinal Quarter of the semifinals. Champions League or... Yeah. Whether you get out, you yeah. know, round eight. And then it's, it's right. all about how you go out as well. Correct. I think that when you look at the way that they've gone out to Lyon, to Porto, to Ajax, Correct. to Villarreal, right. that's the more disappointing team. It's not like you went out against Real Madrid and, all right, you went out early. On penalties, uh, whatever. Shoot. Okay, it no, no, no. Happens. It's like an embarrassing way if they've yeah. gone out. Anyway, let's, uh, you know what else? Last thing, and then we'll move on. Enough about I, Juventus. I, I think it's also very <laughs> telling that their two best players, in my opinion, their two best players have been the two new signings. <laughs> Paredes and Milik Absolutely. have been like the only two players that perform. Perform. I mean, in their most important games, Milik has been the one that's come through. Paredes in the midfield has yeah. been has been yeah. the guy dictating the game. Pretty scary that without them, what what could have happened? What and Milik been. was supposed to even be a bench coming off the bench, stopping from Kies and Vlaovic. The thing is also, and I think also Milik, Vlaovic. Milik, if somebody puts him on the bench, I think it would be a huge mistake. Oh. That guy's a starter. Milik. No, Milik has the experience. Vlaovic is very young. I think Vlaovic, a little bit at a time, he's got to get used to living the double life. He, he never had that, and he's still young. What I mean double life is Wednesday, Sunday, yeah. Wednesday, Sunday. Champions League, at that it's age? a different... Oh it, yes, he's a, a 2000. 
I thought it, well, I mean, when you go to Champions League, it's different air, different atmosphere. When you hear that sound, the Champions League music at that age, the you got to give them time. Right. So now you play on Sunday, Serie A, he gives 150%. That guy always has fire in his eyes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes too much. Okay. <laughs> he, too much. <laughs> Correct. Sometimes he but overdoes now, it. on Wednesday, I think as a kid, you got to give him the benefit of the doubt to grow, to mature a little bit because he does feel the pressure on Wednesday when it's Champions League because of his age. And, and especially a, a coach that says, judge me on this game. Come on, please. Uh, no, but the, 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 uh, uh, Vlaovic is the guy who wants to score. He, he wants on to him score. Too. You know, he How thinks that Vlaovic he's being judged on the goal. Ludo, Vlaovic, when somebody's telling you, judge me on this game, not directly to him, but to the team. His responsibility, oh my God. He says on his head, he gets all messed up. He says to himself, oh my God, I better score, otherwise I'm going to get screwed. That's what I think he's thinking. Don't talk like that to players. Don't mm. you freaking talk to the media, to the player, to anybody. Judge me on this game. That's wrong. Okay. Let's, uh, just to conclude, uh, conclude our episode, I want to I wanna preview uh, Milan against Napoli. Milan against Napoli because it is in Milano. Uh, and then Roma, Atalanta. How do you, we'll start with the home side. How do you feel about going to this game? Reminder for everyone that's watching, this game is going to be on Sunday. It's a 245 match. Uh, Milan will be without Leao because he is suspended um, because of the Napoli without card, Spalletti. Without Spalletti and without Spalletti. Osimen. Uh, Osimen, uh, Dembe, and uh, we don't know yet about Lozano. Okay. So Lozano, the, key players, uh, the, key players to, uh, missing for sure. He didn't travel to, uh, uh, to Milan. You're, you're, the both, you're, the, you're the both most informed teams, both between Europe, you're both in first place along with Atalanta. How do you feel going into this into I this think match? As an AC Milan fan, I mean, uh, I've obviously I like Napoli too, but as an AC Milan fan, I feel pretty good. Leao, it's not vital for us. I mean, Leao is mm. extremely, extremely powerful for the type of game that we have. But now Leao, everybody's getting used to see Leao coming down from the left, him and Teo. But now you see Leao, it's but all you, over the place. You, you can't stop Leao. Even One if you second, see him, you don't stop him. Let me the fact that Leao is not going to be there is not going to be a problem for us because we're not ah. playing only Leao. We have Il Sistema, the system works. You're going to see, you're going to see the kid that we got from uh, from Torino that he scored for a beautiful Bega. goal. You said it right. I don't <laughs> want to say, I don't want to scare them because otherwise they're going to start to watch video games. You're going to see Pobega, you're going to see Benacer, you're going to see Tonali, you're going to see uh, Decatelar, you're going to see all of this youth. We're going to, uh, you know, what's his name over there? Uh, Salem Maker. We not depending on layout to score all the time. We have Giroud. We have plenty. We got plenty. Well, Giroud is a, a finisher, but I think that Giroud will struggle without a guy like Leao. My question to you is, I don't that remember. The, ball. the game will be remember. one loss or no. tied on a couple situations. That carries the ball on, on the left side. On a couple situations of play. I think Giroud Simulan, is not creating from the midfield yeah. to go through. AC Milan, I think, is better in building up, the, in building up the, the, from the midfield. And we have better strikers. When's than the last time up. When's the last time Milan has played with Leao? I really don't remember Milan uh, even without yeah, Leao. I feel like he's always a player that's not injured. He's rarely suspended. So I feel like I haven't seen Le, uh, Milan without Leao. With that being said, Milan did really good at, at always replacing players and not being reliant and, and being reliant on the system. But I think Napoli is a tough test. You So you you feel like you're still confident even Absolutely. without Leao. Absolutely. You brought it up. I will never bring up the fact that uh, we play Napoli without Leao. We don't do that. I it's not know. within the DNA of AC Milan. AC Milan is a squad, it's a team, it's a group that plays as a team. We're not going to be crying if Leao is not there I, or somebody else is not there. End of the, end of the story. I Ludo's not, not crying, crying about the, 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 the people that, that anyway, don't need to get to talk I know, I know he's not going to cry. He's not going <laughs> to well, cry. For me, I'm sorry, but Osim is not as important. Uh, to not play as Leao is to yeah, Milan. for sure. We're um, not depending on Leao. I, I Don't I, say that we're depending on Leao. We're not depending on Leao. We'll see. You make it look well, like we're is, depending on Leao. I feel like you guys are. No, I feel like you are. I think if I'm not mistaken, and, and uh, Manolas is the stat man, I think Napoli, besides Inter, is the only team in Serie A that eight different people have scored. Mm. So he says Milan. If I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Inter and Napoli, eight different players have scored thus far uh, I believe in Champions League and Serie A have scored for uh, for Napoli. Only Inter and Napoli have those uh, have those stats. Uh, I believe. Um, I feel very calm. I'm looking forward to see. I think it's going to be a real good test for Kim mm -hmm. against Giroud. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to that test, to that battle. You know, too strong physically. Uh, Kim strong with the head, very physically, very aggressive. 
same bodies, uh, same physicality. I'm looking forward to that battle between uh, the uh, our Korean guy, the uh, Kim and the uh, and Giroud. But other than that, I feel confident. I think the bench with the players that Napoli uh, have, I feel very confident that we can do really well in uh, against uh, against Milan. Just continue playing our game. Right, it's, our an, open style game. Of it's play. an open game. I think we, we where's are, the, where's we are the game one for you? Where do you think if Napoli were to come away from midfield. Milano? I think I think uh, every game is won in midfield. I think the midfield decides if you win today or you lose. My opinion. I think it's also going to be a good test for um, for Kvada as well, going against uh, you know Milan's defense along with Napoli. Actually, last year we're Correct. tied on the the least goals conceded. I think he's going up against different defenders than he had to in the past. So that will be a great test to see him in a big match in uh, in San Siro, which again you're talking about a heavy shirts. That's also a stadium that can make your legs tremble at a certain moment. I I'll just just to to, to play his side. I think that Napoli. Without Osimhen, doesn't miss as much just because I feel like you signed such a great player in, in Simeone, who's a great bench player, mm -hmm. who can, you know, he's a finisher. They're finishers. Osimhen is a finisher. Simeone is a finisher. The guys behind him are still there for Napoli. So that's why I'm leaning more towards Napoli in this in this match than anything. I do. I will say I think it's going to be a tie. I'll go, I'll, I'm sorry to uh, disappoint you, I'm, but I'm, 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 stay, win. I'm staying in the middle. Two zero. But two zero. For me, if two I was if I was zero, doing a bet, two, even I would say I Napoli or tie. I see he's a little bit more confident. Meret this, is uh, going to get butter on his finger for Sunday, Ludo. No, I, I feel is. I think the, with the Sirigu now knowing that he's the starter, Sirigu is his backup, and Neves coming from PSG, and today. And uh, and he's coming tomorrow, and he'll be in Naples. Naples already in Napoli? No, 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 no. I'm just saying it's, it's what the Napoli media <laughs> is the worst in the world. Really? <laughs> they are the, the the media in Napoli. They ruin <laughs> Napoli. They ruin the players. They ruin the atmosphere. They uh, they they. Those guys are the worst. Mm -hmm. They love that they put this little, you know, the 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 gossip. But now Meret, they finally know. You know, he knows that he's the starter. And he played well. Yes, they played against you know against uh, He's been Liverpool, playing outstanding. against uh, Spezia. He made a couple he of really nice. Well. Uh, he did really well. So he knows. He's the starter. I feel confident. The team is there. I just hope they don't read the newspapers, the Neapolitan newspapers, <laughs> Martino, the Neapolitan uh, we'll media. Send them. We'll, we'll text them because they are, <laughs> because they, are uh, they, they are the worst. And I think it's going to be a fun uh, game. It's going to be coast to coast. One of those games that I think. Even non Serie A fans yeah. will enjoy the show. Will enjoy watching and say, "Wow, I watched a really nice Serie A game, coast to coast chances, opportunities, quality players, great feet, technical, first touch soccer." I think everyone Giroud is going to score enjoy. the first one, and yeah. Catalan is going to score the second yeah. one. <laughs> this is a, this is a strange Wait, one for me. It, Mike, show, show the show. What are you, what are you doing? <laughs> Guys, if you didn't know he's from Napoli, yeah. tell me you're from Napoli without telling me you're from Napoli. <laughs> but but Mike, I want to say this is this, a um, strange one because when I found out Leal was Al versus Napoli, oh, you were happy, right? No, I was just like, wow, that's going to be a big obstacle to pass because I feel like Milan are pretty heavily reliant on Leal for their attack. You know, he can score goals himself, he sets up goals. I mean, look, look at the season alone, he's he's carried his team, he's done incredible. And But the thing is, Napoli's been doing amazing, even without Osiman, I think they're a real complete team. Milan tend to s s win when it matters though. They come up for the big That's a moments. very good point. You know what I'm saying? They're playing on San Siro and they prove me wrong a lot of times. So I'm not to that point where- Big moments, maybe Milan don't, have been there. Maybe don't sure. count out Milan. They're playing at San Siro, even, even when everyone counts them out in the derby, they even when they're down a goal, they manage to somehow come. Oh, no, no, fever. <laughs> <laughs> I never said but nobody, 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 nobody's nobody counting them fever. out. Maybe not counting them, counting them out. out. It's, I just one feel those, like it's one of those games so that when you, when you used know, to play, it's gonna when be you used to play the old Toto Calcio in Italy, you know, with the it's one of those games like we say in Italy, one x do it. You know, one x do it. It's just. So it, it's that, what does that mean? Okay. One, one is, is the win. home team, X is the tie, two is the way team. They so one, team so if you had to play the old style of, uh, of Schedina, betting, Schedina. you know, the Schedina Toto Calcio, you know, your dad remembers, we remember when we were kids, it was only 13 teams, the Serie A games, then you had Serie B, and I believe you had one Serie C game Ooh, yeah. at the end. So you had to put either one, X, uh, or, or two. two. Not necessarily who, who, who guessing the score. You know, win, so tie, or loss. If, if you had this Kadena in front of you, which one would you do? All three. 
What do you mean? You could put all three? Yes, you could put all three on some days, but it's going to cost you more to bet. You're probably going to lose money. I got you. Yeah. That's a good one. What would you put? It's called a triple, una tripla. Yeah, I put uno X, Vittorio Pareggio. You know, I put a draw for sure. I think it's going to be a draw. I think it's going to be a tough game because I just want to say. But a great battle. I just thought with Leo not being there, I would think Napoli would win, but not. Milan step up to the plate so well when it matters. Being Scudetto winners and being a team and playing at the San Siro, I think it's going to be a very it's going to be a dog I, fight I of a match. Hope, I just hope it's going to be a great a great show for Serie A. I think a great be. game it's that everyone will, uh, will enjoy. And we say, wow, we just had we just spent two great hours, great mm -hmm. culture. I had a great Ludo, time. Ludo, are you going to be here for what? the game? Are you going to be here? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's a little super no, no, we have the no, Ludo. Because yes we have the no? order. We have the order uh, Spogliatelle in case <laughs> Napoli scores. And Baba. Baba. And Baba. And Baba. <laughs> <laughs> so I will see this guy Mike, know. yes or not? We'll we see, are? We'll, see, oh, we'll, we'll see. see. Okay, we'll see. Doesn't mean but anything. Before we, uh, before we go, obviously I know we didn't. This is a special episode. We just do two uh, for this week. Anything else from Europe we know? Lazio had a very bad day, uh, losing 5-1. Was that the final score? 5-1. It's Michelin. Uh, Roma won, 3-0. Belotti and uh, Dybala on the score sheet. And then Fiorentina uh, lost as well in the Conference League. And uh, we, we mentioned already, Inter won against Victoria Pilsen um, in the Champions League. Any Anybody have any comments about any of those games? I just want uh, uh, two minutes about, uh, about, Torreira, about uh, Fiorentina. Uh, well, Torreira, I think that was the, the from uh, from the management point of view, I think that was a big error letting Torreira go because Torreira was the Lobotka of uh, of mm. Fiorentina. It dictated the uh, the tempo, and I felt that he had the team uh, in his hand, and you know dictated the tempo and the the midfielders, and and the team was respond uh, was responding to uh, uh, to him. I just feel that the 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 Fiorentina, and I feel really bad. It's again, it goes back to what I said before, um, living the double life. You know, the Wednesday and Sunday, Serie A and the and, uh, and cool. Conference League, traveling, playing these games, coming back to Italy on, on, on a Friday morning during the night and then mm. playing again. It's, 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 it takes a lot from you mentally and physically to now, too, tasking right. too. So now you got to get ready for, for Sunday game and then you got to get ready for a Thursday game. And I don't think the roster, the players, have that experience to deal with that at this uh, uh, at this point. Plus, the problem with scoring goals, and the most important factor, going back to Juventus and Allegri, I don't think Italiano is able anymore to motivate the team. Really? Yeah. You really he only feel motivates that. that team, that team, only when they play against Napoli. <laughs> look, okay, no, 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 I'm not kidding. Look, 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 look at all the games. Look at all the games Fiorentina has played today. Conference oh, League and God. Serie A. Look at all those games and look at the Napoli game. And you tell me how they played. They were running 150 miles an hour. They had fire in their eyes. They were running coast to coast, uh, coast physical, mentally prepared, motivated. And then you tied 0 0 against Napoli. You leave everything on the field, and then you have nothing left. The next game, you're mentally. So you, think, you think Italiano's the problem? Yeah. Really? I no. Think so. That's my guy. No, 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 no. I love Ludo. Ludo. At this point, at right this point you just I, broke my heart, point, Ludo. I, I actually, at this point, I see it because he also says it in, 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 the, in the interview. You got to read these interviews, you got to see what, what's not said, not what, how they say it, mm -hmm. the tone of voice they say it. And where do you watch all these interviews? Well, you have them on the uh, on the on the you see, Sky, you see it online. So on, you know, Sky. afterwards, yeah. Sky, they have the. He said, you know, they, they they're not motivated. I cannot get these guys uh, motivated, and you know, f for them to recharge the uh, the, the, the batteries. batteries, they feel like they uh, they drained out, and the forwards that they got, and the midfielders uh, uh, that they got, and and what they were able to get from the Calcio Mercato, buying players. It, but is that his fault? Don't you think it's the team that like he just doesn't have a roster to compete on two or three fronts? But he also has to stay okay. I also, like his style. But he also, he also has to stay okay uh, when you're buying a player. I mean, I don't think that Laurentiis uh, buys players or some another team buys players you know, without consulting the coach, you know, the technical aspect of the, the coach. I just think that the roster is not up to par dealing with the double... Uh, uh, 
with the double uh, identity. So isn't that that they're stretched too thin rather than the coach? Or but it's also, see, the thing is, no, what I'm referring to about the coach is the fighting spirit. So why you're not fighting? Why there's nothing? It's like mentally, it's like they're drained. They lose the concentration, and a lot of games that they lose is because that mental uh, lapse, that mental of uh, that, that uh, lapse in concentration. Boom, and the other team gets you. That means you're not, you're not mentally prepared because you you lose focus during the game, and the other team scores on you. That, that's that's that, that's the way well, I you see know, it. I've said that, You're not Rudolph. focused 95 I like, minutes. I like Italiano style. It's, it's, gonna, uh, it's got a nice style of playing. I mean, it's, uh, when I, I, I enjoy watching Fiorentina you also, play. You also, need, you also need the right roster to do that style exactly. of, uh, of play. Exactly. To do a 4-3-3, yeah. you, need the, you need the players. You know, you need the uh, you, mm -hmm. you, you you need speed on the wings. Maybe they need uh, more physicality. Need... A couple more players that they they're gonna add to the physicality and to the and to the what you just said. Maybe somebody that is gonna put the ball on the net because apparently um, scoring is a lot yeah, of problems. Yeah, scoring problem. with the uh, with the goalkeepers, mm. with the wings, with the forwards. You know, putting uh, putting Forward, the ball sure. in the net. Today, Gollini, Gollini, mamma mia, three mistakes. I just uh, yeah, not good. I just it was not pretty to watch. I saw. Yeah, I mean, I sometimes saw. you do want to go to Europe. But you got to be able to and handle. I like Colini. Colini you, you, in Atalanta you gotta, you gotta was one of the You got to be able to. One of, he had a bad game. Put to, it this way. To, I don't to, think Colini is a, it, uh, Colini is a great goalkeeper. I think he's going to redeem himself. I, today he had a bad game. Mike, anything from the teams in Rome? Anything about Roma or Lazio that catch your eye? Mm, I mean, for the Roma game, it was Dybala's. When he's on, he's on. And I don't know if. When Anto was watching the game, it was like, what did Juventus like, give up after this? Oh, I big, feel like he, he, he got a new. New life. Uh, sort he's of like been a new appreciated. Life. Dybala has I, been appreciated. I feel like did he get an air freshener like Napoli? <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. think some, I feel like a Juventus. Refreshed. He, right. I feel like he was kind of caged and wasn't loved and stuff. And now I feel like at Roma, he was even saying like when they call his name or celebrate right. him, he feels like he owes something to the jersey. And you can just see it on the pitch. He's happier when he scores. Oh, amazing. He scores wait. incredible goals. So just... Just seeing him in a new atmosphere, in a new jersey, really enjoy hey, Calcio again. Right. How about I think Lazio? it's amazing. Oh, how about Lazio? Lazio. Lazio? 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 Oh what happened yeah. with the maestro? This was Ludo. Like, I think they were what saying they were being slow. Lazio? <laughs> we didn't say anything about his maestro. <laughs> maestro. Oh, <laughs> that, was, that was a horrible See, The loss. thing is with, uh, with Sarri, what he was able to do in Napoli, it's... No, every, talking every, about, every, no, about no, no, Napoli. Everyone thinks <laughs> automatically... Oh, Sarri had those three years in Napoli where the team was playing like PlayStation. He's going to do the same thing at Chelsea. He's going to do the same thing at Lazio or wherever team is going to well, go. Well, why couldn't he? Whatever why you he? saw in Napoli, it will not happen again. <laughs> but you it guys keep saying, give, up, give, up, give the maestro at least two years. The first year, all right, the first year. Now it's the second year. Come on, enough of this maestro, maestro, don't make me say it, don't make me say it, please, that guy's not a maestro, he didn't invent anything, and he's been playing, he he's been that. copying a lot of other great, trying to copy, because if you're good at copying, you're going to just put it on all, right, all the time, you, okay, you. so me, he's not a maestro, so don't call it's him maestro anymore, one, please, it's, 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 Too much. A, it's, disaster. A, it's a disaster, hey, you know what, to finish up, hey, I'm listen, I'm, also, listen, also Liverpool lost, you know, hey. for, who expected Liverpool That's to true. lose, four, Roma four, lost 6-1 to against, Bolton against, Clip, and and then they ended up winning the conference league. My Marco, right. listen to this. So, it's something so 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 happy that Let's I am. It's so sad yeah. at the same yeah. time. Yeah. Time. Yeah. time. Ascolta, mm -hmm. una cosa, you know, something that I saw it while I was watching the game of Juventus. They the camera went into the stands. How did you get to Juventus? From uh, no, I, I'm gonna tell you the reasons why because we were talking about Dybala. Dybala, we tell Mike, I said Dybala, Dybala, right. Dybala is a new life and all the stuff. When the camera <laughs> went into the stand, I saw a couple of young kids. Wearing the Dybala shirts on the, with the Juventus in Torino, I said, "Oh my God! God only knows the way they those guys they feel because they're still wearing the jersey." You go to the to the stadium. Dybala left, leaves the Juventus, and I see young kids still with the Dybala name on the back of their jersey. I said to myself, "Oh my God, poor kids!" I, poor I just kids. Uh, you know, God only knows what's going on on the head of those. Uh, you know, the, the tifosi. Marco is all messed up. Marco looks depressed. <laughs> He's a mess, this guy here. Before he used to win once in a while a biliardino. Now me and Bocca di Fuoco, oh, we, 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 we beat the living crap here. out of him. Out of we here. are killing them. Yeah, we're right. killing them. Okay. All right, we're going to go play our third game right now. Uh, Ludo, thank you for coming thank on. You so much, guys. I appreciate you. Always, always a pleasure. So, Ludo, we went for your Sunday. I'll bring this for your daddy, Ludo. And the baba. And the baba, okay?
<laughs> guys, as always, thank you for watching. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you, guys. Forza. Napoli, always. <laughs>